hundred percent. Music, music. One hundred percent. Music, music. One hundred percent music. Music. One hundred percent music. 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 And we're back. We only talk about music on this podcast, boys. It's like Buckle 100% up. Beef with McDonald's. It's just it's it's, it's, it's enough music. Yeah, it's, you so, it's mostly music. One hundred percent beef. There's no beef. There's no music on this show. Beef. Is there beef? Taco Bell. There's beef. There's beef. Taco Thank Bell God. with the with the one hundred percent beef when they got busted. It oh, was yeah. like eighty seven percent. And then the rest is what? Now premium herbs and spices? Yeah, they spices, just, like, spice blend additives. And uh, it was 87%. And they, instead of pushing back, embraced it. And they sold tacos for 87 cents. On oh, that's I was really a college smart. kid. Smart. That's how you turn an absolute loss into a win. That's how you do it, folks. <laughs> and like, tell, hey, the, tell the viewers who, who we Thanks got for tuning in. Who the hell are these people? Man, just some guys. They were walking around on York. We said, come be on our podcast. I'm uh, no, scared. We are back. <laughs> yeah, we're terrified. We're back <laughs> on the 100% Music Podcast. It's 100% Music 20% of the time. We're here with our <laughs> dear friends, Robbie Wolfson and Samson Hellerman of the band Ripe. I thought it was Robbie Ripe and Samson Ripe. Oh, yeah. I thought you were brothers. Yeah. It is a family it's band. A family no, band. We've all, our last names are all ripe. Well, what? Thank you, our show. first yeah. guests. Yeah. Our first guests. Yeah. I didn't know if you oh, were. So you guys have done the other episodes with no guests. Yeah, they've been yeah. terrible. Yeah. Yeah. No, no one watched. It's, it's, been, a, no it's one been a struggle. Brazen boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's how confident we are in our bowl. <laughs> it's been a bold <laughs> move. Trust us. Midwestern self-deprecation. You, you, guys, you guys have, have played with us. You, you've seen Alex and me talk on stage. It's you, really bold. good. You know, hey, you guys TMs like, hey, you guys, you can do 35 tonight. Alex and I say we'll do about 30 talking, and then we'll do holy water. We'll play one song. Fantastic. Well, hey, I want to welcome you guys to Los Angeles. Thank Woo. you. Welcome to LA, boys. How long yeah, did it take you to drive over to our house today from West Hollywood? We actually were already out in Atwater Village, so it took oh, us a cool 20 minutes. That's yeah, fantastic. We, yeah, was, Not bad at all. We, we planned our day accidentally spot on. Only 20 minutes, but remember, folks, Atwater Village is <laughs> right next one door. block away. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so how long have you guys been here now? Uh, how long have you been living in Los Angeles? We moved in... September the 8th of last year. I feel like it's always weird to answer that question because we're gone a little yes. less than half the time. Well, we did the, we did the math, right? I think we've been here about 50% of the time. It's like the podcast we've actually name. been here. It's <laughs> yeah, 100% music. Yeah, LA, 50% of the time. Yeah. Of the time. Yeah. Have you had any celeb sightings yet? I know you're not here that much. We no, want to hear we, a good one. You got a good we, one for us? Oh I got two God. tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, we got some good ones tonight. Two hot shots. Oh, yeah. well, play the clip. Play Alex the clip. and Robbie. Burt Reynolds or something. Man, you guys have put a lot of thought into this. You guys have put a lot of thought into this. Early 2000s radio, it's amazing. <laughs> That's kind of the had, vibe we're going we for. Did. Perfect. I had a great celeb sighting two days ago. We had a decent one last night. We saw Zach Braff last night. Decent. That's a great one. Decent. Solid. Decent. So, okay. Well, compared to decent. the day before. I think I saw this on Instagram. Yeah. This is real. When I was going to ask you about this. shook Christian Bale's hand. Oh. I cannot believe it. That's a... That's an I have a photo of the back right of his there. head completely yeah. by accident. I was like, Calvin what? looks funny over here. And it's Calvin, and then Samson moved into the shot, and then there's the back of somebody's head, and it's Batman. So. Wait, where where did you see him at? I got a, yeah, the, I got a, the Keith Herring exhibit at the Broad. I was just there today. Uh, yeah. Was Christian Bale there? No, he wasn't here today. <laughs> he said he'd be back tomorrow. Dude, that's such a good exhibit, though. I was blown away. You shook his I, hand. Yeah. So you approached. You said, "Hey, I know who you are." He, I, I mean, we, he was he was right next to me. And I just gotcha. said, "Like, can I shake your hand?" And he like he was so disgruntled. He was like, "Oh, really? Okay." <laughs> wow. <laughs> can I shake your hand? You wouldn't expect anything less from him, though. Yeah, That's was perfect. Say, yeah. He was Honestly, friendly. I'm, I'm surprised he engaged. I feel like there's often the like just sort of like you make yourself very apparently inaccessible he and no like, one touches you. He was like, "Settling is my song of the summer." <laughs> 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 Give me with a handshake. It is the jam. Uh, <laughs> that's one. Uh, Christian Bale, like, I, that's a that's an all timer right there. But yeah, I don't know a, that I would engage. I'd yeah, be too intimidated. Yeah, I'd be too intimidated. He honestly could like looked almost like aggressively normcore, just like really? yeah, nondescript yeah. black t-shirt and jeans, like rocking a backpack that looked like one my dad uses to run with and like just <laughs> with some friend and his kid it seemed mm. although he may actually not have been there with anybody he may have just looked like he was with <laughs> that might not be his us. kid that either. might not be Christian <laughs> <Bell>. <laughs> 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 but, but he is notorious for being uh, uh, you know 
humble to the degree of not using his money for flashy things. He drives a 1998 truck that he's had since 1998. He still drives it. It's his main vehicle. I, I You're follow, talking to a Christian Bale guy. I'm, I'm a Christian yeah, I'm a Bale head. Camera I'm, right. a, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> Bale head. Bale head. Christianity Bale over here. <laughs> yeah. Christian, yeah. Christian Bale is my religion. That's really good. That's a great side. Great one. Well done, boys. <laughs> yeah, I understand why Zach Braff was suddenly secondary. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Like, I who cares about Zach? He's Braff, kind of like bro. looks like a goofy Christian Bale. <laughs> yeah, no, he's got well, he's got Silver Fox energy now. I feel oh, like he's yeah. aged very gracefully good as for far him. as like those guys have. Come on the show, Zach. You know, do you, it. We're what? willing to have you on. Tell us your aging, Zach Braff. That's Tell us your aging thing. secrets. Quite That's why you got to live in Los Angeles. You're not getting those celeb sightings in Boston, are you? Maybe, maybe few. Getting anything no, we, there? I, we walked by a place. He wasn't there, but like Johnny Depp came and did like That's a, a Whitey Bulger uh, movie. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the I, I truly thought you were going to say Johnny Damon. Johnny <laughs> Damon. <laughs> yes! Johnny Damon. That's what I'm talking this about. place you could go back in the early <laughs> thousands and you'd see Johnny Damon and Johnny a bunch Damon. of other guys. What was the name? Was that Black Mass? Place. Was that that movie? Mm -hmm. That was the one notoriously uh, Johnny Depp in the in the throes of his... his uh, personal problems would have a uh, uh, <laughs> an earpiece inside where they would feed him the lines on that film. Really? Because he, he didn't bother to learn them. And he had that earpiece during that trial, too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a part of me that's like, like, I... I'm not, really pick, I'm not gonna pick. I'm not gonna start. I've started accidentally <laughs> podcast you. beef with too many celebrities. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna <laughs> no, talk no, no. shit about Johnny Depp. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, if there's one celebrity you don't want to talk shit on to start a beef with, it's it's Johnny Affleck yeah, for yeah, sure. Johnny, Johnny Affleck. <laughs> yeah, man. Affleck. Well, now that we've done enough damage to our reputations here, why don't you, um, why don't Austin, why don't you um, introduce our cocktail of the week? Yeah, well, I'll set it up and I'll let these boys top it off. Uh, so we do a cocktail of the week this week. We said, hey, why not find out what the right boys do on their right. Writer. Last week we premiered our writer, which includes Mezcal. So we we said, hey guys, what do you what's on your writer? We almost didn't get it because it's way out of our price point range. <laughs> this is not podcast. on our writer. <laughs> this is not in our writer. We all agreed, wow, we need to step up our writer. You start selling bit. out those theaters. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so because they're on a they just packed out and sold out a theater tour on their writer now, they have tell us what we have here, boys. We have a Casamigos Reposado, which, just to be clear, you guys overspent yeah. on us because yeah, we yeah. love you, but we do the Blanco. You yeah, it is, it is $5 what? more. You, made it, you made us a nicer yeah. thing. You made us a nicer thing. We're, we're honored I'll be, to be here. I'll be honest. I said, get Epsilon, and Austin <laughs> said, I'll chip in. <laughs> Same if you got Epsilon, I would have bailed. Yeah, he just told me it's his and least favorite. And I would have drank the goddamn Epsilon. Oh, oh, oh. He said, he's like, I hate Epsilon. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Our text thread today was Austin was like, hey, I'm going to spend a little extra so that I can keep the bottle after the show. Oh, we'll see how much is left after. Yeah. This, well, I mean, yeah. as soon as the cameras are off, we'll just finish it together. <laughs> okay, and we also got it's ingredient high noon, high noon yeah, tequila high sodas. Noon. Yeah, the classic. And that's another thing when you get to the next level. Uh, you, when you're playing the rock clubs, you've got uh, what's it called, White Claw. White Claw. You know, but when you step it up a little bit, high noon. I mm -hmm. will say we like move at the we move at the speed of <laughs> we also we move at the speed of bread with rider updates. But once in a while, just put something on there and see if they yell at you. And like yep. sometimes mm -hmm. you'll be surprised. Like, we you get like, it. We tried it with uh, we moved out to Los Angeles and we started drinking natural wine like everyone does yeah. out here. It's so good. <laughs> we tried to add natural wine with different brands listed and we always ended up with like Boggle or you know whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boda Box. This one's the Dave Matthews wine. You'll drink it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> so and uh, we, Dave's we coming mix, to town, by we the way. We're all going. This takes us to our cocktail. Dave Matthews section of the show. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about Dave. No, we mix the two. Sorry, go on. Tell them what you do. Also, the show sold out. There's billboards everywhere. Oh, it's sold out. Imagine the show sold out. What? So you what can't is the, go. What is the purpose of the billboard when you just when you put the advertisement for the show and then just says sold out? Just well, I don't understand that. I feel like the, route, route, you know? the marketing budget was already cleared, and they're like, well, I guess we'll tell we people that their career is going well. well. Yeah, that one blew my mind. I've been seeing those sold out billboards everywhere. I'm like, well, I guess I'm not going to that now. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, they're Thanks losing the tickets because yeah. no one was going. Here's a reminder of a show you can't make go you to. You feel bad. Yeah, it's working. So you guys, yeah, your riders. Upgraded your tour, last tour, upgraded. You guys, that looked absolutely phenomenal. I just have to know, yeah, like which which city went the hardest? I don't know, but not, maybe not Boston. Let's let's not because I'm sure Boston went the hardest. That's your hometown. And don't name LA because we'll yeah, talk about that yeah. show too. So something in between the two. Don't polls. worry, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, got celebrity I'm beef. Josh. He's I'm got just LA joshing. beef. This man. It turns is. out I'm a curmudgeon. You know, I'm just waiting until I get the chance to say. That would give us a high point. That was a long tour. We saw those tour dates. We're like, Woo, that's a long time for those boys yeah. on the road. Want to pick one? I'll pick one. Solid after you. month long, right? Yeah, yeah. I have to go Chicago. That felt like. 
relentlessly hard. Like from what room? First what room in Chicago? House of Blue, Chicago. House of Blue, Ooh, Chicago. Beautiful, beautiful venue. Beautiful, beautiful. It's room. a really nice room. They yeah, just, we got the pleasure of getting to play there one time. That's right, we did. Yeah. Beautiful Great room. burger. Yeah. <laughs> Solid food. Honestly, the food in Chicago was all dumb good. Like oh, everything Chicago we food got scene is in and around the venue was next amazing level. and even the House of Blues was solid and the House of Blues is never solid. We love you House of Blues boss. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie yeah. is tanking the van. <laughs> Can we cut the fuck? <laughs> we'll do an edit. <laughs> well, that's what we get when we drink tequila well, was, stacked yeah, on two tequila. Sips of this juice and I'm, I'm loose. All right, so we got Chicago Robbie, what do you got for us? Um I'm going to go with the different definition of hard, which was Raleigh, North Carolina, which Ooh. is like a very young, incredibly boisterous crowd. Cool. Um, and I thought that like we were going to be able to open up the pit if we wanted to at the, about a half a point of that show. <laughs> we blew it. Um, you guys' agent hit us up, said, you want to open for Ripe in Raleigh? And I said, well, I'd love to, but I, I don't think we can just go to Raleigh for one show. <laughs> I, we should have done I, it. I, I respect but he the didn't that. tell you that it was going to be, gonna be nuts. the banger of the entire <laughs> Damn it! Tour. He didn't tell me there was going to be a pit. It, it was, was a life-changing gig. The last time we played there, it was mine and Sam's birthday at midnight on that day. And like it was also just an absolute. Can we swear on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a free yeah. it's a free for all, man. Yeah. Absolute shit. Great, great, great follow up to her question that just popped up from a from a comment here. What's the best best gas station went on tour? Because I know Hembry's got lots of yeah. solid answers for this. Well, actually, it's a really interesting question because we found on this tour, it being our first bus tour, that instead Ooh. of daytime Can't gas on the stations, bus. no shitting on the you're bus, you're stopping at Hashtag truck stops, truck stops in the middle of the night. So it was like the best thing in the world was like a Loves at 3 a.m. Mm. post show. Loves is top tier. Loves is top. Oh, yeah. Loves, yeah. man. The Fuck pricing me. is love good loves. too. Yeah. Well, that, that's love the thing loves. is they need yeah. the truck stop for like all the amenities for the bus. So it's like yep. Loves was one of the only real options. So we we had a guy actually professionally hired to make sure we only went to truck stops. Did you guys wow. take any showers <laughs> at the truck stops? Every time. You did. Not once. <laughs> not was, once, I but literally, literally so as you say it, though, like it's not a bad idea. No. If you're like getting on the bus, you don't get to shower because the runner show after the the gig is crazy. Right. You stop at Loves at three in the morning. Like we should have done that. Yeah. There was no you reason not to. The... Well, I mean, they've got to be decently maintained. There are some people that use that as their whole lives yeah, showers. True. Like, <laughs> I'm curious to know, and I don't want this to sound like amateur hour for Hembry here, but you guys were on the bus, and that's that's a dream. That's the next our next tour definitely. We'll, we'll be on that bus. We're saving up. We're <laughs> saving up. We've heard the new record, man. It's, it's worth it. You guys will do it. 100% music for the fans out there. This is a music bus. talk. Thank you, my man. What is the bus vibe? Do you? What's the shower situation? Does everybody shower on the bus, or do you Same still time. shower in the venues? We actually didn't have a shower on the bus, so there wasn't even the option to okay. like, pretend. Okay, fascinating. Yeah, there was that time I woke up, and you were showering in the sink, and I'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah. The sink shower. Yeah. So let me ask you this, though. You... This is deep inside baseball here for the, the, the people in the Twitch first. You have to get your driver a hotel room. Yeah. Do you ever use the hotel room shower clean up? Sometimes if there's no showers at the venue, they'll get a day room or our bus driver was very friendly and like let us use it sometimes if we had like a radio hit before we could get a, a room. So you're kind of um, like, you guys are like, we're the, we're the rock stars here. And he's like, maybe you can shower in this <laughs> That room. is why you have to be nice to your bus driver. You have to be nice to the bus, bus driver. driver is like, yeah, he yeah, controls yeah. your life. He's in, he's Dude, in he charge of your destiny. He could kill you at any minute. <laughs> he, he could take you out, man. When you wake up in the middle of the night and you remember that your bed is going 75 70. miles per hour down the highway, you you got to treat your bus driver We'll right. keep the bus convo going for just a, uh, one more minute here. Of we're quite fascinated. Yeah, <laughs> we really want this bus. Happy to share. How, how did you guys sleep? Mixed reviews from, uh, from people in the bus life. Uh, I slept well enough that when I got off the road, I was like annoyed by my bed for two days. <laughs> really? What the fuck is in my bed moving? <laughs> I, like, it's <laughs> my, like, it is, I'm not going to say it's nicer. Like my bed is nicer than the bus bunk, but just like in terms of both hours of sleeping and like sort of rhythm of life, like it definitely like you adapt to it. It's crazy how cool. adaptive we are as people, yeah. you know, like eventually I'm sure it'll hurt my neck, but you yeah. Know. So if you fall asleep before the bus starts moving, you're gonna wake up when, when it the moves. bus starts moving. So best practice is to just stay up until the bus until the bus moves. starts moving. So bedtime becomes two, four, four, oh, and then wow. you're waking up at two just to keep the see, folks. And this know. is why the lifestyle of rock and roll is difficult because they give us this in the green room and they say stay up till four a.m. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. We I feel like most people still wind up crashing. Like if you're gonna crash at midnight or one you usually wind up falling asleep and then you wake up for a second you crash again it's more like 
some nights if it's like three in the morning, you're like, oh, push to four. There was this <laughs> very unsaid, unspoken, understood agreement that the bus is everybody's space. Yeah. Mm. And nobody once came close to disrespecting that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you just sort of learned that, like, if you actually need to be alone, there is a curtain on your bunk for that. <laughs> and you, <laughs> you get into your space. bunk, yeah. and, like, that's your little you can fucking do your space. Space. You can And that's your it. But yeah. that, that's what, what you have. Like, outside of that, you are you're acknowledging that you share these living spaces with 11 other people. Yeah, it's communal. How many it's days communal. were you out on this this last big run, the bus tour? 30-something. 30 30-something. 30 like something. Five weeks total. And Ooh. then we saw you, you guys were tour tight, tight. in tour Los tight. Angeles at the, uh, what was the venue? The El Rey Theater. El Rey Theater. Well, clearly you enjoyed the show so <laughs> yeah. much. We were having too much fun. We didn't even know where we were. Yeah, that's too right. many venues in LA. You can't yeah. keep them straight. Tight, yeah, tight the show. With converted sound. Completely you know? sold out. If I'm not happened. mistaken, though, you made the uh, fatal tour mistake of you finish in your hometown, and then I think on your tour schedule you had one more date booked Phoenix. the following day. Yeah, you want to hear the best story? <gasps> yeah. Yes. Oh, we? do we? <laughs> oh, Speaking of no, we're good. Oh, Speaking man. of no, moving this on to our next awesome. segment. Yeah. Thanks for coming on in, guys. That's all the time we don't. We don't want to hear. Thank God for Phoenix. We, we wonderful member of our touring party. I, I'm not even going to mention her name for her own sake. I won't say anything else about her except this story. <laughs> but we love you if you happen to listen to this. <laughs> Needless to say, I feel like there are people in the world who do more drugs than this person. And <laughs> I get a text from dinner on right before the last show in Phoenix from our tour manager did you have a mushroom chocolate in the freezer? I said, yes, I did. So our uh, lighting director... <laughs> We're getting closer to the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Name rhymes with... First win. initial, last initial. <laughs> no. She ate such a large dose of mushrooms... Ooh. Not knowing she oh, thought it was just chocolate happening. in the green room. Yeah. So there were cookies that the venue had yeah. left a love note next to that somehow the chocolate had gotten close to, <laughs> because last night the night before was L.A. and none of us were keeping track of anything because we were all in silly places. Um, and so yeah, somehow she got the note confused and thought that this mystery chocolate, which had already been nibbled on, just for context of <laughs> okay, how crazy so this is. There's, there's um, a lot of green room rats out there. Yeah, yeah there are. No, it's, uh, <laughs> she. Uh, she fucking met God, though. <laughs> I mean, she spent a good part of the show under the desk in like the fetal position, but chilling. Like she wasn't yeah, she like freaking it out. Off. She was she just like, "I'm gonna off. take a yeah. second. We in our you guys' like, music would be it'd be good to. I feel like it. You know, it's not. That's a good vibe. Yeah. It's, it's a, a good high vibe. honor when someone does psychedelics in the audience. This yeah, honestly sure, sounds like a better time than we had in Phoenix last time. <laughs> so. Well, the thing is, like, she was doing great, and then. Uh, our bass player misreads a song on the set list and plays it two songs early. Ooh. And then John <laughs> through, through then like off. thinks that we're just being playful and plays a song that's not even on the set list. <laughs> <laughs> we're all having fun. Oh, no. oh no. And then we notice that she's gone. And she literally was just like, oh, I'm just gonna wait this and out. The lights just and blue. It's <laughs> static. Like the yes. lights aren't moving anymore. <laughs> but to her credit, she actually crushed the show and like like took next it level in, lighting yeah, best took it in life. wonderful stride like was really like a wonderful time to be around like I feel like you can sort of go very sharply in a hundred different directions. And yeah. So is that to say there's going to be more hidden chocolates in Ripe's future? <laughs> yeah. Just to um, see what happens for the on crew time. Members. I, I, I'm very grateful that we came out of that with her like willing to speak with us. You know, like I feel like <laughs> she texted me a few days later. She's like, "How many milligrams are in that? <laughs> <laughs> Too many? Are you trying to go again? <laughs> What's my limit no, here? She's trying to tell the story proper. Yeah. You know. Yeah. She's, I like that the during the set list that the set list gets messed up. She's like, on "Oh, these night, guys, yeah. these guys have given." up i'm giving up too i'm just leaving it's she's the like, only night of the tour that that happened is like the one night that we were the final we, night like we yeah. broke we broke her yeah. in the, in the set list but, that's called the hero's dose, yeah. <laughs> that's the that's hero's dose. but to our cruise credit like our tour manager went and like gently coaxed her back to the board for the second half of the show after wow. her break he great like, tour manager yeah. he's like everybody Nijo. tell her tell her that it's like a small dose like everything's yeah. gonna be fine in the back of my mind i'm like oh I took a small nibble of that and I 
That was a huge dose. <laughs> huge dose. No, that, absolutely geez. massive. That sounds like a last night of tour to me if I've it ever truly heard it. It truly does. We so we got Robbie's lead singer, Samson is drums, and we also have Calvin and John who are not here right now. How do you guys all know each other? How did this come to be? Credit to Sam throwing a bunch of parties freshman year. Like we with the exception of Calvin. Oh, the guy with the chocolate mushrooms through parties. <laughs> um, you guys were just filming up my glass. <laughs> <laughs> Freshman year, what, what school? Uh, Berkeley College of Music. Berkeley College of Music. Woo. Nerdly College of Music. That's uh, in Gary, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough people... Right? Enough people think that uh, we went to school in California that at this point I've just stopped correcting. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, our first show with you was, was in Berkeley. Berkeley in California. And then, oh like, oh, God. and everyone's like, oh, they're Berkeley guys. We're like, oh, hometown show. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, and then, oh, and then Josh showed up too, and, and you guys all started hugging thing. each other. And I was like, oh, hometown buddies. <laughs> you know, got the whole story later. Oh, so, all four of you guys went to Berkeley. Uh, we did, yeah, and uh, actually, all six of the people on stage went to Berkeley. Straight up college band. Straight up college band. Well, that's, that's awesome. And yeah, so I would say that like it just sort of collapsed into like colla like steamrolled into itself. There were the first like technical, technically ripe songs had like probably five people on it that like were never in ripe, mm -hmm. and then a couple people that are no longer in ripe, and just like it was literally people getting together to make music. Honestly, you correct me if I'm wrong, but like. Uh, Sam was just in a band right before he came to Berkeley that fell apart and like he was actually trying to be in more of a like Sly and Robbie like production duo thing initially. Oh very cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then I came along and fucked up his plans. <laughs> um, I think it worked out. Yeah we're doing okay. But uh, no I, I think that it was just like we were doing things socially together and like you know, John was the very first guitarist in his position's roommate at the time, and then he took a stint as like one of our managers when three college friends were our managers, and mm -hmm. it was always just sort of this very like chaotic but organic feeling thing for the first number of years. What were you both studying at Berkeley? <laughs> Physics. What were you studying? Dr drugs. <laughs> um, no, I, I I thought I was going to be an engineer because I come from a family that doesn't know anything about music, and I was like, the word engineer is going to have job security. Yeah. Uh, and then I found out what sound engineers actually do by lying my way into a few internships, and found out that I was actually pretty bad at that, pretty specifically <laughs> bad at that. Same. Yeah. So I wound up pivoting Same. into something literally called professional music. Uh, Shout out to fucking professional that music. That was a yeah. at pro music. At 100%. I think, I literally, yeah, I think I, like, I, you sit down with the head of the department and they're like, all right, how do we get you out of here? Like, and, you, really, and you guys played Boston Calling and you all rocked Berkeley College of Music t shirts. Is that I, correct? Yeah. Which I think people thought was. You like want to battle like the bands to be there? Sweet <laughs> and endearing when it was. It was sharply sarcastic. Yeah. There was a hint of irony. Yeah. Critical. John's shirt literally said property of Berkeley College okay. of Music. Yeah. Okay. That's what happens, folks. You go to Berkeley, and then you got to do these huge tours to pay back Berkeley. <laughs> well, you're doing great now, but did, pos did obviously positive things come out of the Berkeley experience. You guys all met each other on a more like, uh, I'm curious to know, educational level. Did something do you feel like it was beneficial? Did None you of learn? us fucking went to music school. <laughs> we didn't go. No. We don't know what it's like. Look, to that's quote, why you guys are a cool band. <laughs> lies. Yeah, lies. To, to quote what I hear Eric Andre said that one time, it's a great way to waste one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Okay, but I think that there's a lot of things that I walked away with very excited to have learned, and a lot of personality it was, it was good to learn under. And like, it definitely like it's nowhere near a wash. But you met your crew. Yeah, you know? and that's the thing. Is like without that's but, priceless. Yeah, so with meeting the band, it's priceless, and without meeting the band, like, I it better have fucking led to a job that paid as much as it charged. You know, right. you get the network. The, you know, you get the network mm. exactly, and, and they're all there's a lot of here. talented people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you this: with the band, was there a turning point? I'm asking Alex. No, uh, was there a turning point for you guys with where it all of a sudden was like this song did it to like level you guys up to? Not to where you're at now because you've taken another level up. It, it seems like music is so much about taking these steps, you know. But was there one standout song or anything where you thought, this is like happening for us, we're doing this for the long haul? Uh, honestly, there was a, a video that we did at like what was called Studio One at Berkeley um, that was sort of the tipping point for us where like it got on the front page of a Reddit page, like R, listen to this. And that was one of the catalysts for our agent finding us in the first place. Um, but like, 
No, it, it was just one of those things where we literally had to sit down being like, we are at a moment where we need to very actively decide whether this was a fun thing we did in college or something that we're at least trying to give some kind of run with. Yeah. And because everyone in the band is realistic as well as gung-ho, like it was like, we're going to give this a try, but we're going to reevaluate this in six months. Um, and in those six months, this video had its moment, which led us to our agent who we were still with, which led us to like our first ability to sort of tour at that level. And like, I think that, like the goon squad from that session which was the thing that got on reddit like we uh, there's a lot of credit due for that specific video being the reason why this got to last as long as it has that's cool and i mean some people are truly destined and you guys are my good friends so i'll say it but there's people that are just supposed to do it you guys are kind of supposed to do it i feel like there's a dynamic with you guys that clearly translates to your whole audience and everything you guys have cultivated as a band um Thank and you. like, yeah, man, for real. Like, you guys are amazing people. The and whatever you guys are trying to um, have the crowd experience is like it feels very communal. Um, the energy at the LA show that yeah. we saw was fantastic. And, and you guys Everybody were saying smiling, that, that there dancing. wasn't even a rowdy gig compared to the rest of the tour. So I mean, there were no mosh pits. No, well, I think the thing with LA and we found it with Nashville to a much more sharp degree. And this is meant as a positive. So if anyone from LA or Nashville is watching this, no shade. Um, as I slowly erode the rest of my reputation. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like they are crowds that feel like they need to be sold and like that's fine We are a band that is very excited to sell to our audience um, But there are some rooms where we walk in and before we've played a note we've won the room mm -hmm. And it's just those are markedly different shows to play and then there's New York where it's a city We've been grinding for a lot longer, but still a room that like you know, is a bit like waiting to be sold to because everyone's coming through there all the time, no exceptions. And it's just a city where like music is competing against any other thing you could be doing with your night out in a yeah. way that feels very loud. And I feel like, you know, for me, it's like the Nashville and LA shows made me sweat in a very specific way mm -hmm. where it's just like you're waiting for that moment where they like sort of crack and like give in to what you're giving them and become a part of it and start to feel that symbiosis. Well, you guys just put out a record uh, that's Bright Blues and we wanted to talk about that because that is our Record of the Week. Record of the Week. Record of, of the, the week. week. It's a long with walk. Little, with the little holy week. water tease. Yeah, 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 which is a, a MIDI version. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I made a joke. I made a joke karaoke version of the song for some stupid thing we were doing, and we just like love it so much. We try to like force it into everywhere. Like I used only like Logic MIDI instruments to make a version of Holy Water, and it's it's glorious. I'll send you the whole thing. For the record, that's <laughs> literally a final at a Berkeley class is to do a MIDI reproduction of some song, and, oh, get a and song. you're did telling you, me you this did in my life. I did in my life by the Beatles. Yeah, you literally. Oh, wow. You yeah, guys went you to Berkeley. You guys are honorary yeah. degree holders. Damn, I'm not we joking. Did it. I would ace that shit. I would Absolutely. like one of those property of Berkeley tees. We will get you one next time we're in town. In Dog collars, Berkeley tees. In my life, Beatles, MIDI. I yep. really want to hear that. We got to hear that. Well. If you've got a copy I, of that, we'll put it on the next episode. I don't know if I do. There's, there's a few things I sang on that are more fun to look. I did like a sound alike of I'm, I'm going to find another you that was Ooh. did well and uh okay. what do you mean it did well <laughs> it did well. Number one in the Berkeley charts number one in the Berkeley charts Berkeley has its I own, made 85 its own charts. I, they charged me money because I got on the charts <laughs> so that's that's really where this all started though right so yeah it starts with the Berkeley you're making audio, you know making those mini versions of it and then you make your first album <laughs> I guess let's just go through the whole process of this. What, what number? <laughs> <laughs> so, how many albums have you guys made total then? Only two after this one. Oh, a lot of EPs. A lot of EPs yeah. and singles. A lot of. Uh, Man, only like four or five. Yeah, and <laughs> 30 songs that we released on a Patreon because the pandemic was at a point where we were Ooh. like, clear the vaults! Yes. Um, yeah, I think that. Uh, I have a Patreon story for another time, too. When, uh, whenever the cameras turn off. Um, no, this is so this record good number two. Air, Bright, Bright Blues is record number two that just came out. Yes. Uh, in March? When did it come out? Was the release yeah, date? March, March 18th? March 10th. 10th. I was off. And how's it been treating you guys? It's been nice. I feel like because we haven't done it so many times, there's not like a pre-built-in expectation for what it means to put out a record. So... Like the most visceral way to feel it was to go on tour and yep. the tour felt amazing and like, you know, it certainly seems that people that have cared about us up to this point are being receptive to the record. Um, I think that this is definitely 
for a number of reasons. Uh, like it is like a chapter two, which I think is what we want when we like step up to make another record. Uh, and also a terrifying proposition for like new fans to be like, I don't like this, or I like this, but I don't like the old stuff. Mm, and the, all the pre-existing fans to be like, it's different now. There's less guitar solos. <laughs> um, Sorry, John. Well, no. you start off hot on track one with a sick one. That's the thing is we get it right. We get it. We, comes we out. And then you take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to him and you take it away. No, I mean, uh, it wasn't even on purpose. It wasn't like we were... Ca uh, this is a, a, a tangent, but have you guys seen Metallica as some kind of monster? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's the point where Kirk Hammond is like, if I don't put a guitar solo in this, I'm just giving in to the lobby that says no more guitar solo. <laughs> and, like, and I'm not going to do that. And I'm just like, it's, it was never on purpose. We were just making the songs the way we wanted to make the songs. Mm, that's cool. So yeah. I got to say, we were on, I believe we were on the road one time, and I think we maybe got some uh, songs from you guys a little early. And we put it on, and we were just like, holy shit, they've done it. They've just mm. gone to that next level. And it was so cool then to see the response to it, too, because mm. we say that about a lot of our friends, because... I mean, everyone, yeah, we love to see our friends, like, artistically take steps forward, but then to see you artistically take a step forward and then also become more popular Get the reception and for move it, up yeah. to bigger rooms, and that was just really, really cool and just felt so awesome to see from the outside. But did that feel like a big step, or did it feel like, does, has this felt like more incremental? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, and you can pass if you want. Yeah, like, yeah. No, I will, you guys yeah. are homies. I'll try to answer all yeah. these honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Pass to Calvin. I think, stressing I think me out, man. It's yeah. very simultaneously both. Like I think that. Yeah. To be totally honest, and like this is not me like settling for less. I do want to take this as high up the mountain as we're allowed. But like, settling's a great song, by the way. Uh, yeah. I appreciate it. Track two, baby. Great. And I have questions on it, but we'll get we'll to that. We'll get we're on track one right now. You know, I think that like. It's nice that it feels like incremental steps. Like, I don't want to skip room sizes. It's really fun to be able to get to know each of these cities through, like, working our way up through the rooms. And also, I want to keep working my way up through the rooms, and this record let us do both uh, so far. And obviously, like, I hope that there is some sort of, like, you know, stereotypical viral moment that we then need to chase for the rest of our lives like a drug. <laughs> um, but, like, it's really, like, what it is letting us do is it's letting us do things like get crew that makes us really excited to be working with, get a bus which lets us be more sustainably on the road, and, like, play rooms that, like, are just continuing to check things off, check things off the bucket list, you know, like, it would, like, as long as that keeps happening, and even if it doesn't, but certainly while it is, like, that's all that we, we, it feels like I need from this right now, so it feels like we get to have our cake and eat it too a little bit in this moment, where we are still growing in a way where everyone's excited to keep growing and also like we did just get to take one big step forward where it's not like mm -hmm. we all of a sudden need to be an amphitheater ready band having never played in an amphitheater before mm -hmm. it's like one step up in all the clubs some really big and exciting clubs some that are still like on the smaller side but in cities where even to sell that many tickets is really exciting you guys sold out our hometown right Kansas yeah, City yeah, we did see it's a great room it's not the biggest club in the city but it's the record bar to sell that out awesome, on a Weeknight, I think. Um, yeah, that's yeah. incredible. How have Thank the songs you. changed now that you've been playing live from the record? Have any of them evolved? Have you jam out any sections differently from the way it was recorded, or are you pretty sticking to the script? Right now, this last tour, we stuck pretty heavily to the script. Mm -hmm. I think that like we're until we've, Phoenix. Until <laughs> Phoenix, we well, we've we've talked about it a bunch. That like you know, it's one thing to take a song for a walk after there's familiarity with totally. it, but especially given that this happened so soon after the the record actually came out. Like, I feel like there's only really one artist that can do that in a way that blows me away so consistently, and that's Bon Iver, and I make no claim on having that level of, like, artistic mastery. Mm. But he's really the only guy I can think of that, like, right after a song is out, it's unrecognizable. Yeah, it's a, a total, it's a remix, yeah, basically, at which that is, point. which is ballsy as hell. I mean, I feel like, like, I listened not on, not in presence, so, like, you know, I'm about to start another fight, but I listened to the recordings of some of the reworks that Frank Ocean did, and like mm -hmm. they're very cool. But like, you're treating your audience to essentially a set of completely new music out of the bones of the things they think they already know. Let's and launch like, into that Coachella set. Why don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's more than anything. It's again just the gutsiest thing ever to yeah. bank on your audience. Basically, like, it's like even they're even more distant from the song than if they don't know it because they think they know it and they don't. And right. like, that's absolutely insane. You're asking a lot of your audience to follow you on that, yeah. that journey. You, you, you have to hear one small be melody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think there's some some nuanced ways that it changes. Though, I mean, like studio and and the stage are two different art forms, and you know, I think the songs do take on a new life energy wise. Yeah, you know, I think of like the song "Say It to Me" off our new record on the album is is really a cruiser. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like. 
you know, it doesn't have much, much dynamics in the way of energy. And live, it was like a jumper, like cool. Yeah. We're jumping in the choruses, and and that was really cool. It was cool to see, you know, decisions we made in the studio, vibe wise and energy wise, that you, that you can take a, another look at that from the stage without compromising the song itself. And especially with a, a record where a lot of the songs you've never performed live, you don't know how the audience is going to react to them. Right. So are most of the songs that way? Are most of the songs um, kind of created in the studio and then they kind of take their live form afterwards? As of this record, before that, everything was made like eye yeah. contact in a room cool. or in mm -hmm. fact on stage at times. Mm -hmm. um, this was the first time where we like in part out of necessity and then it turned out to be something that we enjoyed. Like we sort of stayed and focused on like song craft and then production after that as sort of a step in its own right. Um, I think that we had sort of like the tagline for the years up to that point was to try and like capture the, you know, name your adjective or noun of the live show in the recorded space. Uh, and I think with this, it sort of became clear to us that like the way you do that is you set aside what it's going to feel like live for five seconds and you make the absolute best thing you can in the studio, whatever that means. And then you just sort of trust everybody involved. Like we've been doing it live for long enough that like we will figure this out. Um, but I think it was the first time where it's like we had a record that until we got in a room and banged it out, like we didn't know exactly how it was going to go live. That's um, cool because that's for like our process. Yeah. And then on the other hand, like you have the whole record rehearsed for like two weeks and like you're ready to go in that sense. But you've never played any of it live in front of an audience yet. And so you still have this like even step after that where it's like, wait a second, like we feel good, but we've never run this with adrenaline in our systems. And like now we need to figure out how to do all these things yeah. that we've been doing in a very safe environment in you know, the chaos of, what was the first place in the team? Dallas. And Dallas, and that was tough, man. I, I know at least John and I, like, we really spiraled after that show. <laughs> was this night one? <laughs> night, this one. night one. We yeah, were it's like, going to be a long tour. Holy shit, like, w did we make the wrong record? You know, mm. like. Whoa. Yeah, and, and then night like, two. Like, hold on, like, full on questioning everything. Literally, and then night two, it was like, oh, shit, all right, we still got it. Because that was your first, okay, like, that would have been your first time it. playing a lot of these songs live. Most of them. And that's yeah. that always happens, like, because that's, honestly, that's really how we work, too, where we make these songs in the studio, and sometimes we either get, like, our first show with them, or we get in the band practice room, and we're like, oh, shit, what do we do here? Yeah. But then it always we buy a little mandolin <laughs> in Cleveland because yeah. apparently we can't play one of the songs without it. Which one? Uh, it's a dream. Like it literally no doesn't way. work. I it, love you do for the intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ching, the ching, intro. Ching, ching. we tried to do it just on a guitar, like play it like a funky line. You know, it sounded it's, terrible. It's so bad. It was, you guys didn't work. do that intro with a mandolin. Yeah, yeah. Live. yeah. And, I, plays mandolin. I, and I, I for people watching who who listen to Hembry. I love that song, but I always try to get it out of the set list because if we're flying <laughs> to a gig or something like that and you're going to play a festival and you have to bring your actual guitar plus what, a mandolin that you use for, for one, one song... song I'm not backline that, that mandolin, that's like, baby. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's one of my favorites. Brand is oh, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I love that. Song. Okay, well, it's so worth much. bringing the mandolin then. It's the, well, it's the title bring track. The As we, that's yeah. true. It's, it's the title is track. a title track. You got to play the title track. On Bright Blues, settling is the the single that is has put in the most work for you guys. So my question is, did you know? that it would be the one right out of the gates. Obviously it was the first song, but like when you were crafting it, was there something happening in the room that was, okay, this is above. And sometimes sometimes you don't know, sometimes you do. I'm just wondering in that moment, because you guys were all kind of like hunkered down together working on that one, right? Is that? Uh, that Yeah, I mean, that one was done in, a, they were all done in a bunch of different sessions because of the distance between the demo day and the day we actually recorded. Yeah. But I think that like, we always had high hopes for it as a demo. Like, when you wrote that chorus melody, it was, like, game over, right? Everyone felt really good about it in the room. I feel like it's the kind of thing where we knew it was a something. Like, we knew yeah. we wanted it to be the first single. Like, I think that there were probably four songs that people were, like, quite sure were going to do something. Some of them we were right about. Some of them, honestly, we weren't as right about. Um, and I think with Settling, it just felt very obvious that, like, this is a really strong announcement for, like, where we're at right now. Like, this <laughs> is... A, it was a bit of a transition song. for the band from the previous sound and everything. Yeah, and I think that this was something where it's like, it still felt incredibly kinetic. It still felt very high energy. Like, it felt like a really well written song from our end, and like we felt like we put the hours in. And you know, I think that we knew it was going to do something for us in terms of like the single that was going to do the most legwork. Like, 
I don't think any of us know what that looks like until we're in the middle of it. Yeah. So like we were we were guessing from that perspective. So I've seen you guys associated with the Wolfpack and Corey Wong crew. What's the connection? Um, I'm a I'm a huge fan of Wolfpack, Corey Wong, all that, all the satellite the Wolf crew. Yeah. yeah do you, do you crew. play guitar? But it's funny. Musician? The reason that we know Corey Wong is because of a Steve Brule joke that we were cracking oh, in line to get on a cruise man. ship. Bringing Garrett oh, on the yeah. screen. Oh, yeah, he loves yeah. Brule. He's the Brule man. Yeah. Yeah. Brule, it's Garrett. Yeah. Yeah. Miss you, buddy. He loves Wish the you were Brule here. Too. Wish you were here, Garrett. Um, but yeah, we were playing a show called The Rock Boat, which is a Heck rock yeah. cruise line that's like anchored by Sister Hazel, and I think better than Ezra plays every year oh, as well. Big better, big hard. Ezra heads over here. Big um, Ezra, Ezra, Ezra lights. <laughs> that, was, that was sharp. Um, or quick. So uh, <laughs> you gotta be no, quick so with him. We're, we're getting in line with the other musicians, and like I believe it was Calvin that was cracking some Steve Brule joke, and. Like the guys behind us, like start talking to us about it, and it was Cody Fry and Corey Wong, um, who were supporting this guy Ben Rector. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, and also just... real quick, we got Rockboat Fam in the chat. And we're we're Rockboat Rock Boat Fam. Yeah. Rock Boat. I'll, I'll, I'll get you back on track here, but I just uh, thought that was pretty cool. That's yeah. really yeah, that wild. Cool. I mean, then that's the thing is like it's a really tight knit community. They still come out and like let us know that they're from the Rock Boat. It's always really mm -hmm. nice. They're really cordial. Um, but the the fans are like have the full run of the ship and so it winds up becoming there are sort of certain enclaves that become the de facto spaces where the artists hang out mm. one of them being the bar at the casino because I think we got a discount there <laughs> that sounds, one of them that being sounds the dangerous, dangerous. Uh, the little um, like the late night um, buffet snacks mm. like the little chicken fingers and the 230 the, fried foods the egg rolls <laughs> like a whole fucking yeah, tub of egg rolls uh, regardless we like start need? talking to him oh, I make a I make an immediate fool of myself because when I hear his name is Corey Wong, I'm literally like like the Wolfpack song and oh, get wow. laughed at. Oh, and it was him. Yeah, it was him. That's fantastic. And, that's uh, literally how you guys met. Well, that's how we met. And then he wound up playing some songs with us on one of our sets, and then he wound up producing the first record. So, oh, so like, he produced, the, produced the, whole the whole first, first record. record. Join the Wild Unknown. And you yeah. toured with him, right? Uh, yeah, I toured with him this past November. I, just to wrap up that before we move on, what was the Steve Brule reference that you guys were making? Because we're all Steve Brule fans here. I, I like... We have a greatest hits. I'm pretty sure it was Sweet Berry Wine. Yeah, it's gotta it's be Sweet, sweet Berry Wine. I'm pretty sure it was Sweet Berry Wine. For your wine. It might, have, it might have been the... Playing the, the hits. You're probably yeah. getting on the boat. It could have been the shellfish. I was literally about to say, <laughs> like, because it's of that, it might Steph, have been the... Steph in the chat guessed yeah, they it was got, Sweet Berry Wine. Yeah. <laughs> they, got, uh, they got free shrimp out back. Free shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Oh, I love Steve Brule. Well, now the choppers the are choppers here. The choppers are here to take us away. It oh, might be time to start wrapping shut up. It LAPD's down. here. Shut it down. It might be time to They're shut like, it down. Oh, you guys have been on for an hour. They heard about the chocolate mushroom. Yeah, so, 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 so let's wrap up with this one question. I, I have to know this. What what legacy band would you step in for? We gotta do this both though. Who would yes, you? Yes, absolutely. So this is for both. I'm assuming I'm on drums. I don't know. Yes, both. Yes, both. We're both on drums and then we're both doing front man. Yeah, do both. Do both. You have to be a drummer who sings. So there's only a few options. <laughs> That's sick, though. Oh, shit. No, no, take your pick. Any band in the world. You're the front, front drummer. The front drummer. <laughs> front drummer. Yeah. I really think I would make a wonderful drummer of Kings of Leon. So if Nathaniel mm. fucking you would be real good. Doesn't want to do it for. And he Samson. doesn't. Samson, that yeah, sounds pretty realistic. You could like, probably, you could probably get wants, that. Like if if he just wants <laughs> a. Like a break, like it, one tour where he just wants to stay home with his wife and kids that he has. I'll go. That's all he wants. To what do. kind of car does he drive? <laughs> <laughs> You're making me realize that we need an app that lets legacy musicians sit one out. Sub just app. like yeah, yeah. find someone well, that's like not going to take the gig. But the like, app is <laughs> called Sub. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sub. Yeah. And there's Sub. A, there's a Two Robbie Bs. Wolfson. You got a whole profile. People can like <laughs> yeah. see your resume. Yeah. All right, so we got Kings of Land. What, what, what do we got? Um. Kings of Leon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they're not. We I feel like we are joining. Yeah, we're yeah. just we're two of the followers now. Um, they're like Don't rapping. Like they're that. wrapping their stuff up, but like any era of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, I. But if like, he's not singing and he can't play drums, what's he doing? No, he's he's like convalescing at home. I mean, I he is one of my favorite musicians living, and he is 
Like Phil or Peter? Phil. Phil. Peter. <laughs> You're talking about Peter, right? Honestly, yeah. they're both incredible. I we recently we just did a show and we played Salisbury Hill as our one cover and like that shit's so good. Like there are so, so many good. incredible songs from both of their pens and both of their eras of Genesis rock. Mm. Um, but it's I, insane that they were in the same band together. It's and that Phil had no designs on the front. Like Phil was like pushed into the frontman position because like Peter left. And they it, they sing like each other. It's Which is very, always a cool phenomenon to me about all bands. very crazy. That'll um, be our next episode, 100% yeah. Genesis. But, no, the, but the, the thing is, <laughs> like... Yeah, have a whole podcast. Yeah. It's, uh, it's great answers, I think. 50% um, Genesis, the band, 50% Bible. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say, <laughs> too, Hardcore as well. Old Testament. <laughs> and turn In it the on beginning. Again. <laughs> no, no, one third that, and then also Sega Genesis, too. Oh. Oh. Well, great, great so answers. I think uh, the correct answer, obviously, was Goo Goo Dolls, but we should... <laughs> and what you are we say? Samson, the is, Samson is open for Goo Goo Dolls on a side stage, but I'm giving it to him. We open for Dave Matthews band, not Henry, but my previous band, on a side stage at the Gorge. Gig was kind of rough, but the <laughs> amenities were rough. top tier, baby. Robbie, tell him what you really think of Dave Matthews' new album. <laughs> new album? He's still making them? He just put one out. So um, they finally lost Robbie. <laughs> After 30 years, <laughs> they lost Robbie. I'm I like sorry, dude. I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> Well, look, we should leave it at that. You, can, I, you guys I, I might gotta, end up at the cover gorge. my ass a little bit. You might end up at you the gorge. So end up at the gorge. Because yeah. literally, he is the reason I picked up a guitar. Like there is, there are things that he's done that like he will never be able to like write out of my DNA, and I need to listen to the more the this album more. But it's just. It's hard to age as a rock star. Yeah, it's hard man, to do the, like there's like a handful of people. <laughs> the 64 year old over here. Yeah. There's a handful of people that do it with real class and grace. And then there's a handful of people that have the good sense to just disappear. And then everybody else is just trying to figure out like what is still like resonant that they can say when they literally live a different life to everyone on the planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like no one is doing what Dave Matthews is doing in terms of his day to day existence, you know, no. like. I have never once woken up and felt like Dave Matthews. No. <laughs> and Except for when someone took a shit on the bus. <laughs> and then dumped it on oh some God. strangers. We were in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> look, it up, look it up if you don't know what we're talking about. Just type in Dave Matthews bus Chicago. Well, yeah. this is for my Boston boys. We can't all be Tom Brady, can we? Uh, no. We can't all be Tom Brady. <laughs> no. And on that, is he coming back? We'll save that for 100% he's sports. Si he's <laughs> signing a deal with the Miami Dolphins as we speak. No, He'll he's going to be a Jet. He's going to be a Jet. No, he's no, kicking no. out Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers he's and backing Tom up Aaron. Brady are going to fight over the starting No, he's the running back no. for the Jets. No, he's playing saxophone for Dave Matthews. <laughs> Right, it was amazing to have you both on. Oh, that's what a it. show. As we always say, see you guys at the Goo. We'll see you at the Goo Doo Dolls concert. See you at the Goo Doo Dolls. Thanks for watching, everybody. Oh,